Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop text project, I'm going to show you how to put text on a circle like we have here with this little logo design. We'll finish off by putting an orange image in the middle here. And I had that just right there. I just found this on the internet, just, just you know, any old orange picture for that. Now there's one little trick to doing this, and we'll see the trick as we get into putting in the actual type. But let's start off with making our basic layout here. So let's go up to File New. I have mine set at 1000 by 1000 and with a resolution of 300. Choose OK. There we go. I want to have a black background, so let's go to our Fill tool here and click in there to make the background black. Easy enough. We're now going to put in some guidelines so we can find the exact center to get us started off with. Now I could just drag guides from the edge here and wait till it kind of snaps into that center point. Let's be more exact about that. If we go up here to the View menu, click on New Guide, I can put a guide in at exactly the center since my image is 1000 by 1000. 500 is the exact center. So here's 500 at the vertical. And then New Guide. 500 again at the horizontal. And that's exactly centered. Let's now go over here to our Tools. And we're going to choose the Ellipse tool have this set for shape. There we are. And let's set a fill. I'll give this a white fill. Actually, we'll give it an orange fill, so it'll work out just fine. I just have kind of an orangey color in there, just grabbed from the standard palette down below. So orange fill, white stroke. We can adjust the stroke size later to give us a, an outline border on that, but I'll set that at... Now let's just put in five points. Okay, so I'll bring my cursor right down over the center. You don't have to be perfectly exact on this, but I'll try to be as close as possible. That looks good. Hold the shift key down and pull out from that point. That gives us a round circle, and it is drawing right from the center point, as you can see. Let go, and there we go. There's our first section. So we have our background. We have our border on there and then we want to come in and create an inner circle. Easy to do, just grab this circle, pull this down, new layer just like that. I'm now going to resize this. Go up here to Edit and Transform Path, Scale. And If you hold the Alt and Shift key down, it will actually drag us so it stays a circle and you can drag it in and out and it will stay centered as well so it'll be perfectly centered circle and I'll put it somewhere around in there giving me enough space for that outer section. Now I don't really want to have that coloration in there so let's go back here to our path and I'm going to set the fill here to just kind of a brown just kind of just a, a placeholder brown and let's do no stroke on that. That's where we're going to be putting in that image of the orange. Maybe I'll give it just a, a slight a slight stroke. Let's just bring this down to a couple of points. Just a little thin line. Okay, so there we go. We're now ready to come in and put in our text. We have to do another path. Now, this was a shape and then we duplicated the shape. So for our path, I want to have a circle which is just a little bit outside of this circle. Now I can't just grab this and pull it because it's the shape and not a path. What I want is a brand new clean path. So I'll go to our ellipse tool again. Let's change the setting up here to path this time. There we go. And again, find the center. 
just like that. Hold the shift key down and pull out and bring it out just a little ways like that, a little ways past that brown circle. And there's our path. And if you happen to move around and you lose that path, just go to the paths panel and you'll see it right there. That's the work path on top. Okay, so far so good. Let's now put in some text. Go over to the, your text tool right there and choose a nice typeface. I have mine set at, at Bauhaus 93. Now if you don't happen to have this typeface, it's a real standard typeface, just do a search online for Bauhaus font and you'll find a downloadable font easily there. I mean there's tons of these available. So you can easily find that online. Now so there's there is the text insertion tool. You can see that. As I move over the path, notice how that tool changes when I move over that path. If I come down here, it changes again. So we have three different looks on that. Out here, this was just going to give me text on a line. When it's right like that, that will give me text on that path. Actually, we'll apply the text onto the path. When I come inside here, get that kind of circle around that, that will give me text inside the path. It will be straight text, but inside the path. So it's outside the path, on the path, inside the path. So I want on the path, and I want it right at the very top center. So just kind of come down, stay on that line, and when you see that text tool change, click at that point. And let's make this text white while we're at it. I have mine set at 24 point, but we'll change it if we need to. So let's just type in some text. Good enough. Notice how it's coming in inside. That's fine for right now. We're going to shift this now so it's in the right place. This is that little trick I was talking about where it gives you some control. Actually, there are two little tricks to figure out here. This is the first of those tricks. And we want to have our character panel. So let's go up here to Window, and you want the character panel right there. In here, there is the baseline shift. This allows you to move where the baseline or the bottom of the letters is. So I'll just go over the icon. You can actually scroll this and adjust your baseline. Okay, now let's select our text just like that. Just triple click. It selects your text. We can then shift our baseline. If you know what you want, you can just type it in here. Just click in there and type. I'm not really sure, so I'm just going to pull it out like that. Just pull to the right until I get that nicely centered in that space. There we go. Now it's just a little too large. I want to have the text ending right at my line. So I'll do the same thing up here. Here's the type size. I'm just going to come in here and back up just a little bit like that. 22 point gets it exactly where I want it. There you go. So there's our top text. You know, it, it's that easy to do. Now the bottom text has another problem to it. And let's see what that is. So let's go back to our path. There's the work path at the top there. And then back to layers. That's selected. You can see the path in there once I did that. Back to our text tool. And we're putting it on the bottom, of course. Notice that we get the three icons again. There's a roll over that path. So you want to be on the text on a path icon. Come down right to the bottom center. Click at that point. And let's type in our text. Now you see the problem here. The problem is that the text is upside down. And that's because it's it's taking the text and taking it clear around the circle like that. So we need to flip the text right side up. If we get it inside the circle, it'll flip right side up. It'll be in the wrong place. So I'm going to triple click this to select that text. While it's selected, let's go over here and grab the direct select tool. And hopefully you'll see that path in there. You'll see these two dots, top and bottom. If you don't see those, then try that again. Let me just demonstrate that. So let's say here it is. You're on your text layer. Triple click to select that text. Hit the direct select tool, and you should see that path. If you don't, just try it again. Now when you have that path, notice if I, if I roll over the text, I now get a little 
text tool in there. You see that right there. If you're not seeing that text tool, then try to reselect it again. I found sometimes it doesn't quite select properly. So make sure you get to that position, then click and drag, and you can pull the text in. And the reason why I'm clicking right down here and pulling it straight up is because the text is going to go where you pull it. If I, if I pulled over to here, I'd have my text over here someplace, and I wouldn't be able to easily get that moved around. But there you go. So that is that trick. Now, it's very important. I'm going to undo the steps here one more time to show you that, too, because this is the tricky part if you don't get this exactly right. You know, it may always work out for you. It doesn't for me, so let me just show this one more time. Make sure you're on your text. Grab your text tool. Triple click. Go to the direct select tool. And then you should see the path and the dot top and bottom. Come down right down here. If you see that text tool, when you move over your text, come right down to the middle. Drag straight up. Make sure you're staying on that center line. And there you go. Okay, where well, our text is now right side up. That was the hard part. Now we can select our text again. And using the character panel, we can shift the baseline down instead of up. We did up for the top line, we'll do down for the bottom line. Window, character, there's our baseline shift, and I'll just shift that out towards the bottom until it looks about right. And there's that bottom text. And there we go. There we have our text on a circle. Okay, let's now have a little more fun and give us an image inside that's inside there. There's our ellipse. That's just fine. And we're going to come up and then take this picture of an orange and then paste that orange inside of that circle right there. And let's go back here. I'm going to just select everything. Or you can even you know just grab part of this if you want to, but we can select the whole thing. I'll just do select all, edit copy, back up here, let's select our circle. Now holding down the control key, click on the icon over here, and that selects just that circle like that. Okay, we now have our circle selected. Come to edit, and then paste special, paste into, and that pastes that picture inside of that circle. And I can now move the picture around inside the circle, as you can see there. Just a matter now of scaling that to fit. So edit, transform, scale. There's my corner. I'll hold the shift key down so it scales it proportionally. You know, kind of move that around until I get just the look that I want. Just kind of centered inside. And because we have our crosshairs in here, we have our two guidelines, and the orange is actually centered on that picture, it's going to snap right to that center point, which makes it a little bit easier. And apply. There we go. There is that. At this point, we can make this a little more interesting. The orange is sitting inside of that mask, so it's at that size. The size was based upon the original size of the ellipse. So now I can resize this and actually make this brown circle a little larger than the orange. Let's see how that works. That will give me a nice little brown outline. So go up here to the Edit, Transform Path, Scale. Hold down the Shift and the Alt keys. Again, that's going to be scaling it from the center and proportionally and then pull it out a little bit and I can show a little bit of that brown inside there. Let's just go ahead and confirm that. So there we go. That's the little bit of a brown outline. And the last thing I want to do is to do a little bit of a drop shadow in behind our text. We're not actually using that one. Let me just get rid of that. Now this is the top text. I'm going to just push that up above so it's in a logical position. There's a top text on top, bottom text on bottom. And let's go to our FX button right down here. And that brings up the blending options. Or you can find out up here, layer, layer style blending options. The one that we want is drop shadow. Bring it up there. And there's that little drop shadow happening. You can adjust that drop shadow to suit. 
and adjust the distance in here and the spread and the size of that. Whatever you like. I'm going to leave mine fairly small and kind of hard edge. I think it looks nice on this. Choose OK. Now that we have that layer style here, I can copy that layer style down below. Let's just right click and copy layer style. There it is. And then right click and paste layer style just at the edge of the screen. There's our bottom text. All right, let's just hide some of this stuff now. Click on any of your text. We don't have that path showing. And let's hide those guidelines. Let's just go to the extra in there. And there we go. There is our path on a circle. Now we can adjust the position on this. If you want to get it more centered, that's easy to do. Again, just come back to your text, grab your type tool, three clicks like that. And then you want to bring back up your character panel and then simply adjust the baseline shift and to have that centered in that space. There's the first one that's come down here and select three clicks. And again, baseline shift. Get it nicely centered. There we are. There is your text on a circular path. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.